Hi guys. So, many theories have been put forward over the years as to the purpose of the pyramids, this being a direct result of the lack of any real evidence for their function. However, what if I were to tell you that the pyramids were a sophisticated protection structure built to house a once functioning Stargate transport system? A transport system or machine that is still there. I have found substantial Egyptian writings on highly developed knowledge of Earth, the stars, life and death. The Acre Sphinx of the ancient Egyptians was a divine leonine beast, having two symmetrical torsos, each with its own head. The two halves of the acre were located on opposite ends of the horizon, one lying to the east and one lying to the west. According to the ancient Egyptians, each breast of the acre contains a portal or gateway leading to what they called an underworld. The sun was believed to pass through the eastern acre gate at sunrise, then at sunset it would pass through the western acre gate. This would mean that there is another sphinx with the use of remote controlled robots Red writings of an unknown language have been discovered within hidden tunnel systems beneath the Great Pyramids. These tunnels led to four doors, still with their seals. Interesting to note, the tunnels in which these robots traversed are not big enough to fit a human, yet they are scrawled in an unknown writing. These markings were found in a pyramid that the Egyptologists claim was built by Pharaoh Khufu. Almost immediately after this discovery, Dr. Zahi Hawass, Minister of Antiquities, ordered that a wall be constructed around the pyramid complex, supposedly to protect the pyramids from being damaged by the public. It turns out that these tunnels may lead to the burial chamber of an Egyptian god known as Osiris. It has also been reported by numerous sources that the US military and the CIA have been securing the pyramid complex, along with the Egyptian military. The document on the Egyptian mysteries by the 3rd century teacher Iamblichus describes the ceremony within the secret teachings into the mysteries of Osiris, the science of will. He states that a novice was blindfolded and led through a door in the breast of the Sphinx, through the gate that leads to a fourth place and it may have all been thanks to a deity known as Thoth, who invented writing, medicine, magic and the Egyptian civil and religious practices. And also the thing I believe they are hiding a way of communicating with the supposed dead god Osiris. I suspect this was the creation of a portal. He was said to have been a great magician who knew all that is hidden under the heavenly vault. With the help or teaching of another god Anubis, he also created the first mummification rituals in Egypt. These entities along with Thoth created something that protected the moon and the sun from destruction by the god Set. If I'm correct in my translation, then Osiris, Anubis, Ra, and many others came through a portal, making them either an alien, a god, or dead. Set being a destructive cosmic force capable of destroying our sun and moon, which Thoth managed to protect us from. The physical remains of Osiris, and I believe others too, which could confirm my hypothesis, have been found and covered up. The tunnels mentioned earlier lead to Osiris's tomb. However, although this discovery is an astonishing one, which could prove Osiris, Set, Ra, etc. to have been real beings, it has been cloaked in secrecy. No photographic evidence of remains exist and a military presence was immediately felt in the area after the find. I now feel I have collected substantial evidence to suspect Egyptian and other authorities around the world are hiding a highly advanced device or structure under the pyramids of Giza and may span the African continent crisscrossing the ley lines of Earth and the path of the sun with Egyptian secret teachings being openly accessible, and telling of portals which were created with the help of gods, illustrated as non-human entities, Osiris' tomb being exposed as discovered and shut away from the public. Unknown writings in impossible passageways, it is only a matter of time before what is hidden is exposed to the world. Peru is undoubtedly a jewel in the crown of ancient sites that can be found all throughout the world. Not only does it contain some of the most astonishing as yet unexplained polygonal masonry to be found anywhere, but it also contains many other anomalous, advanced features built with such precision and prowess they are still utilized by modern-day man. Irrigation systems still flow with fresh water, as if they were built yesterday, still providing water to the local residents who reside in these mountainous areas. 
Agricultural technologies, utilized by our more modern ancestors, the Incas, undoubtedly aiding in the flourishing of their culture. It is a place that possesses such advanced features, academia can merely resign themselves to a limited close explanation of such wonders, as merely identified as pre-Incan. This without any explanation as to how these ancient groups, who predate those who they have studied in depth, were aware of such advanced, elegant solutions to farming, water sourcing, building, and many other miraculous techniques for survival, among these notoriously inaccessible cliffs throughout the Inca Trail. However, deep within the Andes, far away from the well-worn tourist routes, is possibly one of the most perplexing ancient ruins of them all. Known as Napahuaca, it is a rock-cut ruin that is seemingly placed alone in a place of no initially obvious significance, no indication that it was linked to any existing pre-Incan ruin, yet the precision and indeed obvious effort that went into the creation of this anomalous artifact is undeniable. Carved into the mountainside, strongly reminiscent of false doors, features that can be found among many ancient ruins around the world that, according to numerous ancient legends, were used by spirits to enter and exit the realm of the living. It is intricately designed, features smooth, seemingly laser-cut surfaces, which in regard to its dating is nothing short of astonishing. Found at an altitude of nearly 3,000 feet above sea level, it contains many baffling features which may indicate why this seemingly inconspicuous location was selected. The ceiling and floor of the cave entrance, for instance, not only appear as if it was hewn with laser-like precision, but were also carved at two precise separate angles, one of 60 degrees and another of 52 degrees. These angles, intriguingly, are also found within the Great Pyramids of Giza at numerous locations. Furthermore, whoever constructed this possible false door somehow picked the only spot upon the mountain that contained traces of a mysterious blue stone. This blue stone, only found within this specific spot, has for many years been utilized within modern technology for its unique characteristic for its piezoelectric properties, a type of crystal capable of generating an electrical charge used by radio manufacturers for many decades within receivers. The rock chosen for the specific location of the carving is also, intriguingly, magnetic in nature. What's more, if one travels exactly halfway around the world to the UK, the false door aligns perfectly with Stonehenge. Why was this false door created? How was it created with such precision? What tools were utilized by ancient man to achieve these feats of ancient engineering? Why was it placed at this specific location, a place that has been discovered to contain mysterious blue crystals with unique electrical properties? Is this false door, like many alternative researchers have postulated, a portal of some kind? Allowing the teleportation of an ancient advanced civilization? We find the location, the precision involved, and indeed, the other intriguing characteristics surrounding this mysterious anomaly, highly compelling. Who built the Great Pyramids? Why did they build them? If we take known Egyptian accounts as accurate, then many of the ancient structures upon the plateau were designed surrounding the subject of death. A civilization that believed when the sun set, it traveled through an underworld guarded by Anubis. In other cultures, which we believe re-inhabited sites, ruins built with knowledge that we will now show far succeeded that which these people, who carved their own identities upon these structures, ever possessed. The Aztecs, although displaying similar primitive understandings of the path of the sun, interestingly shared similar beliefs to the Egyptians. Specific animals connected to astronomical objects are seen everywhere. These similarities in belief structures could be seen as evidence of a seagoing civilization. Ancient peoples crossing oceans 
sharing their belief systems with each other. These people who artistically demonstrated their limited and heavily superstitious knowledge of the universe upon all these ancient sites sealed their own fate as impostors to the modern discerning man. Once one begins to explore the unbelievable accuracy, the astronomical alignments, the seemingly impossible feats of block placements, you are seemingly presented with a controversial truth. How could a civilization who clearly believed that the Earth was not only flat, but that all experienced night at the same time, could have possibly known the information which was instilled within the construction of such sites, in particular the Giza Plateau? It should now be becoming clear that the ancient Egyptians, the Incas, Aztecs, Mayans, etc., etc., did not build these sites. However, the sites still exist, and their past function is still there to be explained. Why did so many of these civilizations, placed far closer to these original constructors than us, all agree that these structures were some sort of portal, allowing the passage of gods, spirits, or souls? Why were all these ancient civilizations, who undoubtedly worshipped the original creators of the cradle for their people, obsess over underworlds, portals, and stargates? Most ancient civilizations had belief systems surrounding death, the soul, and the passage thereof. But the strong draw to portals and gateways, somehow allowing the communication with an apparent other dimension, is undeniable. It seems so strongly entwined with these ancient people's beliefs, that these civilizations may have been aware of something regarding these amazing structures that we are not. False doors, for example. These doors to nowhere can be found all over Earth, yet interestingly, they are only found amongst the same uncannily astonishing stone cutting which we are so often noting as indicative of a lost knowledge. Why were these doors created? Have they always led to nowhere? Or was there something extraordinary, once triggered by this precise web of ancient structures, all mysteriously aligned upon our planet? A function so many of these ancient civilizations were completely obsessed by. Regardless of continent, we even suspect Antarctica you will find remnants left by an as-yet-unexplored ancient yet clearly highly advanced civilization. Due to their immense age and the enormity of time which has passed since their mysterious disappearance, only stone megaliths remain. These remarkable block structures, still allowing us to peer back and, with a bit of imagination, get a peek at just what this golden age could have possibly been like. Many of these ancient sites seemingly abandoned suddenly, with no damage appearing to have befallen any of these sites at the time of their vanishing act, leaving buildings half-built, stones half-cut, still resting in the quarries, including the notoriously remote Easter Island, all abruptly and mysteriously abandoned. The question is, where did they go? Did they reach a point of spiritual or technological ability that they experienced a type of rapture, ascending, or perhaps descending into another place entirely? Perhaps through the use of some type of portal? Sakwala Chakraya, or Ramsu Uyana, is an ancient incredible petrograph. Beneath a large boulder, among the ruins of a once majestic city known as Anura Dapura, located within Sri Lanka, is what some experts have concluded is an inscription left by someone well over 5,000 years ago. There are two theories concerning the meaning of the petroglyph, and rather humorously, they both make the ancient drawing an upart. Firstly, that is somehow an ancient map of the Earth, a chart, illustrating a complex knowledge of the Earth. And secondly, and undoubtedly the most compelling, and supported by considerably more study, is the petroglyph is a key to some sort of portal, which many suspect to be a stargate. There are no other known images similar to Sakwala Chakraya, known to any ancient cultures. In fact, there are no other known ancient images similar to Sakwala Chakraya anywhere in the world. In 1996, 
Researcher and historian Mihindu Kulasaraya Susantha Fernando realized something amazing regarding surrounding ancient temples. Fernando described his discovery within his 1997 book, Alien Mysteries in Sri Lanka and Egypt. Just like the Great Pyramids of Giza, there exists a perfect alignment of three major stupas – Mary Savatia, Ruvanwelli, and Jetavana – all perfectly aligning with three stars within the constellation of Orion, namely Rigel, Alnitak, and Bellatrix. It seems such compelling and precisely arranged features cannot just be a mere coincidence. The center of the key is filled by a large circle comprising seven concentric rings, which has been translated in regard to the key theory to represent acoustic radiation. Who made the key of Sakwala Chakraya? Is it really a key to a stargate, like so many now believe? Is this where the builders of these ancient sites went? We find the research to suggest such highly compelling. Scattered over 700,000 square kilometers of glistening Southern Pacific Ocean, 176 small tropical islands, which make up what is known as Tonga. And one, it seems, was chosen for the location of a rather amazing ancient structure. One of the most mysterious megalithic monuments in the world, an ancient trilithon known as the Megalith Gate of Hahamunga. The mainstream academic explanation for the site is as follows. Hahamunga is a megalith trilithon that was built around 1200 AD, built by a king of the time as the entrance to his royal compound, Heketa. As with many intriguing and confusing ancient structures upon Earth, if you dig further than mainstream attested views, you will often unearth another opinion, often suggesting a far longer, far more astonishing tale set much farther back within our past. And the Tonga Gateway is no exception. Although mainstream archaeology, through native folklore and currently accepted, chronological knowledge of the previous inhabitants of the island suggests that the Tonga Trilithon is but a mere 800 years old. There exists three rather large problems with this conclusion. Until, of course, erosion inevitably takes hold, drawing a line between a discernible archaeological feature and an apparent geological one. The Tonga Gateway now consists of three coral limestone slabs, each still weighing in at around 40 tons. Three rather large elephants in the room for mainstream archaeology. Like with all other trilithons dotted around the world, the documented primitive capabilities during modern historical timelines will continue to demonstrate a lack of credibility to the school-taught fanciful tales given for their construction. On the contrary, these sites indicate a once far more capable civilization left somewhere within Earth's very distant past. For example, there are many legends linking the Hahamanga Gateway to Maui, as William Corliss astutely put it, Maui is but a label, slapped upon everything found within the South Pacific which cannot be explained." End quote. Additionally, to disassemble the phony public narrative further, Corliss's own research, other explorers of the island, along with Eric von Daniken's compelling and comprehensive studies of the island, found that islanders, although willing to tell tall tales to tourists, lacked any reasonable replication skills at a later date. Put simply, they were lying. Indeed, although they spoke of a king some 800 years ago, the massive stones, being a gateway to his Heketa, after extensive exploration of the island by many people, especially behind the gateway, which the entire site is seemingly focused in on, no trace of a Heketa has ever been found. Some specialists who have studied the erosion patterns upon the coral stones have come forward with claims that the Tonga site is a ruin far older than currently thought, and that although the stones are rough in appearance today, they were much larger and also smoothly cut into squares using an unknown, ancient technology. This, some claim, may have happened as far back as 10, maybe even 100,000 years ago. Was the Hahamanga Gateway some form of ancient stargate? Why place it exactly where it is? Why build it exactly how it was built? 
Who would go through such effort of transporting many 40-ton blocks of coral to this small island, then somehow constructing this once enormous and mysterious structure, aligned as a gateway that led to nowhere? Or did it?